Hey everyone, Anbo Joy Media here, and today we're talking about powering your gear. Everything that we use in the video production and filmmaking industries needs power. From the microphones, to the cameras, to the monitors, to the computers, all of these things need power to work. Now, one of the biggest considerations that we need to keep in mind is that if we have individual batteries for all of these things, we're gonna have way too much stuff going on. So, I'm gonna walk you through some of the ways that I power my gear and how I approach powering gear in general. Uh, and what that means for me is adaptability, universality, and flexibility when it comes to powering gear. Now, a good selection of cords and batteries is gonna give you all of these things. Now, I'm mainly gonna be discussing powering things on set, but I'll also cover some storage and battery charging solutions as well. Now, the first thing we're gonna talk about are extension cords. Now, these are sometimes referred to as stingers, but I'm just gonna call them extension cords for the purposes of this video. Now, one of the best things about these is that they are kind of the basis for almost everything else that we're gonna use. Power outlets or plugs are readily available, and they're super simple. You plug one end in, and you get power out the other end, which gives us the ability to be further away from the wall. Now, one of the reasons these are so great is you can find them in a variety of lengths. I've got a 50 foot extension cord right here. I've also got a smaller 12 foot one here that has some additional power outlets. So this has taken my one power outlet and it's turned it into three so I can output multiple lights or multiple power options or charge multiple batteries at this time. I would recommend color coding by length. Now the problem that I have is that when I see a bunch of these red and black ones in my kit, I just grab one and sometimes it ends up not being the length that I want. My recommendation for you, color code by length. Uh, there's bright greens and oranges. Get a color that you like and that you can live with. Some of the other cords that we want to talk about are things like splitters. These are also sometimes referred to as squids because of the way they look. I've got this uh, one that I like here. It just goes, it's got one input and four outputs. And the big benefit to these are that uh, the outputs are not stationary they're not right next to each other like some of them that we get so i can move these around if i've got say a big battery charger that needs to go here the other one's not going to be pressed right up against it uh, these are nice i've got a couple of these in my kit and i use them all the time for splitting out power sources another staple that we want to talk about is a splitter now i've got just a standard little tap splitter here what it does you just plug it into the wall and then on these other two or these other three sides rather you've got outlets. So this one just attaches right to the wall. You can also attach this to the end of an extension cord uh, to give you three outlets further away from the wall or closer to where you need them. I don't know what the heck this thing is called. This has become a favorite of mine recently. And what it does is it's got a tap on one end and an immediate out on the other side. And then it's also got just one extension. Now, this doesn't seem super handy, but what I've been doing, what I've been in the habit of doing lately is I plug this into the wall before I attach my extension cord to it, and it immediately gives me another out if I need it, so I don't have to go over to the wall and unplug the extension cord that I've got plugged in already. I can just plug it in to this other additional one right here. Super handy to have around, and they are honestly lifesavers in certain circumstances. This is another cord I picked up recently, and it's got this uh, nice little hidden power plug there. You plug that into the wall. It's got a nice low profile on it. It doesn't stick out from the wall very far. It's got three power outs, two here on the front and one here on the side. And then the real big part that I like is the are these three USB ports here. Now, what I've been using this for typically is plugging this into you know an outlet in a, in a hotel room while I'm traveling, and I've got you know three power outs to charge batteries. And then one of the things that I really really like about it is that I can also use USB outs to power my batteries or charge my batteries rather while they are still in the camera so I don't have to take batteries out uh, or you know have additional outs here. So I can from this device charge like four or five camera batteries all at once. Some other cords that I want to talk about are USB cords. Now I try to have a variety of these around uh, you know some for my GoPro. I've got this nice 10 foot one here. It's like a little braided one. I actually think I just picked it up from um, like a convenience store one time when I needed it. And again, these will plug into a USB, whether it's a power adapter or a little power brick or a power adapter that I can plug into the wall. And then this will go into the camera. Now these are great for charging batteries in camera. I also use them to keep cameras powered while I'm on set. For instance, right now I've got one powering this camera. I use Sony cameras and as many of you know, they are notoriously bad when it comes to battery life. So having a couple of these to help power my Sony cameras is a lifesaver on set. 
And I just keep this little set of cords in this uh, little canvas bag that zips up and it can get thrown into a backpack or uh, wherever you need it to go. Now we're gonna talk about batteries and batteries is an area that we could spend all day on, but I'm gonna walk you through some of the ways that I like to power my gear and some of the things that I think that you should consider when powering your gear. I'm gonna start small here. I've got another little canvas bag and I use this to house all of my rechargeable AA batteries. I like these Energizer ones because they fit both AA and AAA batteries. In case you have any of those little pesky devices that use AAA batteries. I like the uh, Energizer ones, but really any rechargeable AA batteries are great. It's 2019, you shouldn't have a bunch of old batteries sitting around that you're throwing out after every shoot. Get some rechargeable ones, they're really easy to use. Almost all audio gear is going to take AA batteries from my little zoom recorder here to my other little zoom recorder. Uh, I use AA batteries in all of those. Um, I also throw AA batteries in most of my microphones. Now I've even got a little aperture light that will run on AA batteries in a pinch. It traditionally uses NPF style batteries, but it's nice to be able to throw some AA's in there and uh, blast the light on that. It's gonna throw my autofocus way out of whack, but it's nice to have that option. Uh, there are other lights out there that will run off AA batteries as well. Now I just keep a bunch of these batteries here in this bag and the chargers will fit in there really nicely as well. And then I can pack this into my camera case or throw it in a bag or my light kit, wherever I need it. And one of the big things I wanna stress with double A's is that uh, you shouldn't rely on them, but they're nice to have in your kit. Uh, grab some rechargeable ones that fit your budget and you should be good to go. Some of the other batteries I wanna talk about real quick, I've got the uh, Sony NPFW50 batteries that I use to power both of my cameras. Now one of the big problems I have with these is that the cameras just chew through batteries and I need several of them to film all day. So I've got four here that I use in this little 3D printed battery holder. Shout out to the gentleman at the Film Look for finding that, super handy. I hate having a ton of these batteries around. Uh, this is worth mentioning though that you can find some pretty inexpensive versions of these batteries. Some of the brands that I like are the Wasabi Power and the Watson ones that you can get. You don't need the Sony ones. I do think that they last a little bit longer and work a little better, but you can find some that fit your budget regardless of what brand you wanna go with. Regardless of what camera you have, regardless of what battery you use for your camera, you can find dummy batteries for them. Uh, and what these are, are a battery that looks just like a normal battery. It'll go into your camera. So you can see here, I've got the real battery, the dummy one, they look identical. So one end is gonna to attach to my camera, the other end is gonna get powered from something like a V-mount or an additional battery that's going to power my camera for much, much longer than one single battery here can. And what this will do is it'll save me the time and effort of changing batteries constantly while I'm on set. Now, these are one of my favorite styles of battery. Now I've got uh, some NPF 970s, some NPF 950s, and then, uh, what are these, NPF, uh, 550s or something. You can see there's various sizes of these, but these things power a ton of gear. So some of my lights use these, which I like. My Draycast light here, my Cam TV Boltzen light uses these as well, and so does that aperture light that uses the AA batteries. Now I think you should consider the Sony NPF line of batteries if you're looking for a higher capacity battery. Some of the reasons are you can get multiple sizes of these. So many things utilize these batteries, monitors, lights, cameras, and you can even find these batteries now with like USB out so you can even power a phone if you needed to in a pinch. But there's a lot of options for these and they're relatively inexpensive. You don't need to get the higher end Sony brand name versions of these I like the Castar versions of these, and I've also got some of the Wasabi Power versions of these as well. I've never noticed any difference in using these versus like a higher end brand name. So honestly, I just go with the ones that fit my budget. And like all the other batteries, uh, you can find dummy battery versions of these too, which is really nice. So I can power anything that uses an NPF style battery from a uh, V-mount battery or another larger one that has a D-tap or a P-tap out. So I think these are a really good bang for your buck and they're great for people starting out and looking for a higher capacity battery. Now we're moving on to some bigger batteries. These are V-mount batteries. V-mounts are named because of the little V-shaped notch in the back of the camera. And these things are really nice. Now I've got a handful of these Dino lighting brand ones here. They're 95 watt hour. You can buy them in uh, slimmer versions or shorter versions or way bigger versions if you want. 
And I like these because they've got a D-tap or a P-tap in and out. This is how you power the battery. This also is how you power your gear, one of the ways that you can do that. And I've got a handful of D-tap and P-tap out accessories here to power everything from lights to my camera and a bunch of other stuff. And this is a pretty small bundle of cords just to have around. Uh, and it'll help save you in a pinch if you ever need to. So one of the best parts about V-mount batteries is that they can be used to power a ton of gear all at the same time. So you can attach one of these like I've got now with a rod adapter to your camera rig, and then you can power things like your monitor, your camera, external audio recorders, and a variety of other things. Now these have the regular P-tap or D-tap out on the battery themselves. They've got an additional one here on this uh, Camvate uh, V-mount plate that I've got. We've got some other powering options, including 12 volt and 7.2 volt. So you could power uh, something that needs 12 volt out or 7.2 volt out. You've got a USB out that you could power as well. And then on the top here, we've got kind of the on off switch. So, and I like these a lot. These are a great pro option. You'll see these all over film sets and on video production shoots because they're relatively inexpensive for how much battery you get out of these things. One of the other things, and I mentioned this earlier, is that with all of these, we wanna make sure that these will migrate with us for a long period of time. Now, things like these V-mount plates will last you for several cameras, most likely. You know, So this isn't regulated to any one brand of camera. I can use this with like a Sony camera, a Canon camera, Panasonic, whatever. So that means that I can travel with this as I get better equipment or just different equipment. A couple of other batteries that I wanna talk about really quick are these larger ones that have multiple outs. Now, you can see this one here, web top, weeb top, whatever it is, and uh, you can see it's got a little battery out. Um, I accidentally turned the flashlight on here, so it's got a flashlight grate. Um, it's got an AC output over here via a uh, traditional socket, but you can see it's got a bunch of different ones, so if you're in various parts of the world or had different uh, outlets, you could use those. It's got multiple USB outs, and then multiple DC 12 volt outs too. So this thing will power time-lapse sliders, cameras, all sorts of stuff via all of these power options. And then you can charge it from uh, you know, this other end and it's got a battery indicator here. Just some of the things that I think are really important when it comes to thinking about these things. Um, you wanna make sure you know how much battery power is left in one of these. And then you want a battery that can handle multiple outputs. Um, now this is really nice to carry with me onto a set or for a remote location, like a time-lapse. I can set this up, it's nice and durable, and then I can power things like my, my camera and my time-lapse slider for it, or I can just power my camera for long periods of time, and I'm not gonna need to travel with all of these other batteries. Now another one that I've got here is this OmniCharge. Now this is something that I believe I backed on Kickstarter a few years ago, and it's really sleek and uh, good looking, really fun, you can just power it on, and it's the exact same thing pretty much as this other battery pack. We've got USB out, um, you know, a uh, whatever that is, the USB-C that you can use to power some other things. And then it's got um, an outlet and another uh, DC port out. So you've got a lot of power options out here. In this one, you can see it's got the battery percentage over here and what your output is. So you could tell it to do um, AC out or USB out, whatever you've got. Now, I almost never need additional batteries for longer shoots when I've got these two things. These things power my lights, they power my camera, they charge batteries, they can charge my drone. All of that stuff can be done with just a couple of these batteries. So one of the big things that you wanna consider is adaptability. So again, making sure that you've got something that's not locking you in to just one way of charging batteries. Transporting this stuff is pretty easy. I actually just use a dairy crate and I put all this stuff in there. Um, that means I have all of my powering equipment in one short, small, concise little area that I can carry with me to and from shoots or onto sets. So there you have it folks, some of the ways that I like to power gear. Now I'd love to hear what you use to power gear. Leave those in the comments section below. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and I will see you next time. What's that? I've just been told that we have 69% battery on one of the cameras. Great. It was, a, yep, it was a 16 year old boy that said that. All right.